Hey guys, and today we're going to be looking at um, oily metal and how to paint it. Um, it's something that I really love to do, and I think it's a technique that's um, certainly easy to master when you're beginning. Um, and I haven't seen too many people do this technique. Uh, it's really, really simple, very fast, um, but I think improves the quality of the metal overall, especially when you're doing uh, batch painting, army painting, uh, whole metallic schemes on your models. Um, this can be a really great way to uh, speed it up, uh, trick a lot of the, the edge highlighting and give you a nice, easy, fast result um, without too much hassles. It works especially well on Space Marines, uh, Necrons, um, yeah, anything that has like a full metallic scheme. Um, it'll just give it a little bit of gritty depth um, and it's a good base for later on if you want to then further do like battle damage, weathering and so on. This is a really good base. It also works well on small areas like on uh, guns, weapons of different sorts, um, engine parts on vehicles and things like that. Just a really nice way um, to uh, deepen the overall um, colors and look of your of your metal uh, parts or whole models of your miniatures. So yeah, let's have a look what we got. Um, it's really, really simple. We're using a mid-tone brown shade, so something like this. Um, if you don't have this particular color, the seraphim one, um, just anything that's a, a, a mid a mid brown, uh, mid to dark brown, but not too dark. So nothing like Agrax um, Earthshade or something like that. That's a little bit too dark for what we want. Just something in the middle. And the reason for that is that um, it's going to stain the metal um, with this sort of brownish, light brownish stain, which will show through uh, when we use um, the next part, which is the uh, null and oil um, and the, the black ink wash. And that will, um, if you have something that's too dark, the black ink wash is going to completely ruin the effect and you're not going to see much of the brown, you're just going to see a lot of black. Um, so to have that contrast and that brown to black style, uh, you want a slightly lighter ink wash. So we have those two. And then um, finally, we've got uh, some silver. So I'm just using this Runefang steel here, but anything that's a light silver tone, and that's going to be for your highlights. Um, and in terms of anything else that you need, um, obviously your miniature, and uh, you're going to want to have um, a uh, Citadel's Chaos Black Under coat spray or similar primer um, and you're going to want lead belcher um, uh, metallic undercoat spray um, or if you use, if you want to use a different brand then something that's just in that mid-tone uh, level for the for the metal or mid to dark uh, something like this um, that's what you want in terms of brushes um, I like to use a synthetic brush for my dry brushing, something with a um, sort of wedge shape on it like that. It allows me to do very focused dry brushing rather than a big puffy brush like a makeup brush or something like that. Let's see if I can get that in focus for you. There you go. So something along those lines is what I like to use because I can direct uh, where the dry brush is going. And because of this particular technique, you do want uh, something that's going to be more directional than, um, than a large round kind of uh, brush. Uh, other than that, just... Um, a um, you know mid-sized brush for all the ink washing maybe even a large brush and then a fine detail brush for um, the final stage of this um, highlighting so that's pretty much all you need obviously a palette as well I'm using a wet palette but you could use whatever you like a dry palette doesn't really matter and some tissue paper or paper on hand uh, for um, rubbing off the paint when we do the dry brush stage so that's it that's all we need um, so yeah let's get started Okay, so first step, um, I have my Assault Intercessor here. Um, you could be using anything, but I'm using an Assault Intercessor. And I've already primed, black undercoated this, and uh, then lead belcher sprayed it. So we have a nice even coat. The reason why you want the metal going over the top of the black um, is it'll help uh, enrich the color and give it a, a nicer finish um, to do these stages on. You don't want to put the, the silver directly over white or over the, the raw plastic, because um, that's not going to look very good. Uh, so this is where we're at. And now what we want to do is we want to begin um, the first stage, which is the brown ink wash. So let's grab our paint. Uh, and we'll put some on the palette. And we'll be ready to go. So um, with this technique, you don't want to put um, just the straight uh, shade onto the onto the model. It'll be a little bit too... Um, 
too strong. Unless you really want a very damaged kind of style, then you could do that. But for this, what we want is um, a slightly watered down version. And it's good practice to always mix a little bit of water with your paint, um, whether it be an ink or, or, a, or a standard color. Um, it just helps, um, one, for you to practice, and two, um, it will spread a lot nicer. Um, no matter what the, the brand of paint uh, claims, um, most paint generally isn't amazing straight out of the pot, at least in my experience. You always want to add just a touch of water or medium or whatever to uh, thin it down. So once we've got that down, um, we just draw it off the end so we don't have too much on our, on our brush. Okay, just like that. And then we begin uh, ink washing. And so with this, you can do the whole model, um, just rubbing it all over the surface. Okay, just like that bring it down, moving it, directing it into the all the creases and crevices on the model to uh, generate that uh, brown shade. But also uh, you want to go over the flat areas as well because you can get some nice staining going on there. Just want to sort of try not to let it uh, pull up too much in big blobs on, on the, the flat areas. D drag it down and direct it to sort of the edges like this so you get the sort of staining uh, gr gradation uh, from the bottom up. That's usually the, the best way. When you're thinking of dirt and grime and stuff on, on metal surfaces, they generally uh, form at the bottom. Um, you know, the, the, the dirt runs down, um, it pulls up around the let. You know, if this was a, you know, if the space memory was real, uh, then um, yeah, all, all, the, all the dirt and metal on him would, would form mostly around the bottom, so around these legs and stuff. Um, so once we've gone through and done all this, I'm gonna go through and do the whole lot. This is the type of thing that you're gonna end up with, okay? And then um, I'll come back and I'll show you how to do the, the black ink wash. All right, catch you soon. Okay, so now we're on to the next step. So really, really simple. You can see now the brown ink and how it's dried. Okay, you get some really nice um, discolorations around the feet there where the, the, the watery ink just pulls down there. Um, yeah, and you can see that mid-tone brown is really effective because you can really see um, that corrosion or I guess damage on the surface. Not that Space Marines would ever have this type of damage, but we love putting it on our models because it um, gives them more realism and, and more life. Um, really, <laughs> this armor wouldn't be made of metal anyway. It'd be made of some crazy uh, sci-fi material that would never corrode or damage or anything like that. But um, we like to do it on these just because it's fun. Um, so yeah, that's where you're at. And now we want to do the black ink. So it's going to be basically the same thing. Again, we do want to water this down. You definitely don't want to put, for this one, you would never put the, the straight um, ink straight on. Um, with the brown ink you could, but with this one you don't want to because it's going to completely ruin the effect. So you want to get that nice and diluted. As you can see, it's it's two to three drops or so of water per, I guess, little dollop or drop of, of, of ink, but something like that. You want it relatively transparent, as you can see there, um, and then um, that should go on really well. And just test it out. Um, it should give you the shadows in the grooves as we paint this on. We're going to see that black going into those creases, but also across the surface. It should start to bring out this kind of luster um, to, the, to the overall look of it. Um, and it'll deepen those shadows. You'll start seeing black merging with the brown. Um, one, a variant technique of this is actually not to wait till the brown ink wash is totally dry and allow it to be slightly wet. Um, that can create an interesting effect as well. So then the, the black and brown ink washes will uh, blend and you'll get some interesting blends too. But just for the sake of simplicity, wait till it's dry and then do the black ink after. So if you do these in a batch, by the time you finish um, the last one, the first one should be dry um, and you can just move on like that. And what you're going to end up with is uh, something like this as I go through. There we go. So you can see how lovely oily and black and brown that becomes. So we look at the other side here, it's a little bit sort of faded, not quite defined. And if we look at the other leg, we're getting really nice clear definition, okay? And you just go over the whole model like that, 
dragging those pools of, of, of pigment across the surface, letting them pull in the right areas towards the bottom of armor panels, things like that. So you get the shadow from the bottom going up to a lighter surface on top. Remember your models are generally lit from above, just like the, the spotlight I've got here on the model. You can see that very clearly that the, the light is all hitting those top areas and it's creating natural shadows across the model um, due to the, I guess, the high chroma level of the, of the metallic paint, you can see it very clearly um, just under natural light. So that's actually telling you where the shadows should be uh, and that's how you wanna drag that ink wash across the surface. And so you just keep doing this over the whole model until it's all completely done and you just keep moving that around, moving it around adding more ink and more water as you need um, to cover the surface of the whole model. And then you end up with something really cool. So go ahead and do that. And then um, I'll come back and I'll show you how to do the dry brush step. Okay, we're back. Um, and so now the black ink wash should be dry and we have the finished effect. So all this brown blacky style thing that's going across the surface. Um, yeah, it just gives it a lot of life a lot of definition, um, looks really cool. And so now what we want to do is bring back some of the light into the model because it's a little dark at the moment. We want to bring back that shiny metal surface and, um, and pick out those edges. Now, um, the way we're going to do that is through this focused dry brushing. So we use, as I said before, one of these sort of wedge shaped synthetic brushes or something similar, something that you can, um, that has a little bit of a firm um, end on it so that it, it's, it's capable of, um, holding its shape as you're brushing across the surface. So dry brushing is the method of um, putting paint on the brush, then wiping almost all of it away on either a piece of um, uh, paper towel or, or, or paper um, until it's almost completely gone. And then you're going to very vigorously brush across the surface, um, in this case, um, aiming for the edges of all of the armor. And that therefore you'll get like a, um, an edge highlight, um, a little rougher than you would normally do if you were to line it in with a brush. Um, but because it's metal, this works really well. That sort of rougher finish is going to end up uh, looking really good for metal because metal does have a lot of um, micro uh, scratches and all kinds of um, imperfections in the surface. And if you look at something that's, that's, um, that's metal, like a piece of machinery outside or something when the light hits it, um, you'll notice that if you look very carefully, um, the light isn't like one continuous line across the surface. There's little micro shadows and all things going on on that surface. It's not totally smooth. Um, so dry brushing metal uh, really does simulate, you know, a bit more realism uh, in it rather than necessarily just line highlighting it. Um, so let's get into this uh, dry brushing. So we're gonna get that steel color that we had, uh, put it on the end of your brush, don't load up your uh, dry brush with it too much, just, you know, enough, and then uh, pop it on your palette. Okay, now we're gonna rub off the excess until we get that nice speckly sort of finish. As you're rubbing it, you should see it uh, start to sort of almost drift away to nothing, okay? And then you'll end up with something like this. And now we're just going to brush it across the surface aiming at the edges, so anywhere where the light's hitting. Remember how we were talking uh, in the previous part where I was saying how the light goes from above? So it's gonna hit mostly those top edges. And so you're just brushing it across the surface, hitting those top edges, coming back, going backwards, turning this up ways, down ways, all the different directions so that your brush is always hitting the edge um, of the model. So um, never sort of going directly, um, I guess, perpendicular or um, like straight on. Um, across those flat panels, you can give it a bit of a brush um, very lightly just to uh, lift the color a little bit. But again, try to be directional with it and um, make sure that the, the end of your brush is hitting those edges correctly. See, I'm brushing up rather than down and that's hitting the bottom of the foot. Um, across the top there where the light is going to hit from this angle um, and you'll see as you do it the light that you're using to light your miniature with while you're painting um, is going to hit those edges and that metallic color is going to shine and so you do actually end up getting this sort of shiny edge and that's going to help um, tell you uh, where you need to do it so we keep going across like this hitting those edges 
hitting that, hitting across the top of that um, that collar bar, that the, uh, the the collar arm there, um, or whatever it's called. And so you'll see that the, it'll start to shine a bit more. And we just keep working across the surface, doing this, going back, grabbing a little more, brushing it off, okay and then continuing our work. We're going to hit the gun as well, the, the entire model, everywhere where, where it's metal, we're going to do this, um, hitting hitting it nice and fast like this across the surface, coming across like across the gun, uh, sorry, the, uh, the chainsaw there, um, hitting those edges, hitting the edges of that greave, okay? I love doing these little shoulder pads here. If you brush across, you'll get an instant line highlight that looks really nice. I'll see if I can bring that up so you can see it. Do you see that? You know, you don't have to do any more work to that. It's like already done. Um, and so the idea is to try to get that type of effect going across the, so you're getting this like, you're tricking the line highlighting and trying to get those nice clean uh, line highlights in as many of the flat panels and the, the edges of the armor as possible. So like I did on the shoulder pad there on the top, if we were to come across like this, um, go this way, and that should pick off that, um, slightly defined edge on top of the, the backpack there, and you'll get that line highlight too um, across there. And so we just keep going around and doing this across until you get like a nice finish that you're happy with. And on, on the flat areas, it will also um, uh, lift and create a bit more luster, almost like you're polishing the armor and you'll get a bit more bright um, steel out of it. And so that the tarnish will only now be more directed into those little crevices and recesses. And you'll end up with something that's nice um, and varied um, all the way around the armor. Um, so I'm going to continue to do that and I'll come back when I'm done um, and we'll move on to the final step. Okay, the final stage. Um, so let's have a look. So now we can see, see how a little brighter, it's not as, um, not as brown anymore. And you can see on all those edges as the light from my spotlight there hits it, it's creating these really bright little sharp points of light. And if you have a look at a lot of these panels, it kind of almost looks like it's been line highlighted. Can you see that? Um, that leg armor there and across the bottom of the shoe there, the top, you can see how it's got that, that bright line. Um, it looks like it's been, you know, line highlighted, at least across um, quite a few of the panels. Um, yeah, and you could just leave this right here and move on. You know, if you're just starting, this is a great place just to begin. Um, that's pretty much done the majority of your model. If you do Necrons, that's that's basically a Necron done. Uh, you know, there's really not much else except for the glowy uh, energy stuff that they have in their guns and maybe their eyes or whatever. You're pretty much finished. Uh, and as you can see, I've also based, um, base painted the, the, the base there, um, the rubble. And the reason why I've done that is that once I've done the dry brush, um, when you're doing metallic armies and metallic color schemes, it can often be um, a lot of metal to look at. Your eyes get very worn uh, from looking at all of the metal. And when I start to move into the details and the secondary colors, um, so I can see the way they work against each other and how it all comes together as a whole, I'll go through and base color the base. Even if you're doing, um, even if it's a flat base and there's no texture on there, because um, you're going to, transplant this model from this to um, a, a more scenic base, I would still paint a flat color on there that's similar to what the final, to the, the color of the, the terrain that this guy's standing on. And so that way you can see the way that color interacts um, with the metallic and with the other secondary colors. And it's gonna be much softer on your eyes. See how that, that color on the base just frames me a lot more and you can see it. So I've got another one here from before. Um, and if you have a look at the difference, see how, it's all one big color and it's a little bit harder to tell what's going on. Um, this is going to be a lot nicer for you to, um, you know, to look at when you're doing those final details. Um, so especially when you're doing like 20, 30, 40, 50 of them, um, you don't want to be just looking at metal all the time. Um, so here we are, we're ready to go. Um, let's get into the final step. So we have a fine detail brush. We get some of that steel out again, pop it on your palette. Okay few drops here and there, a little bit of water, dilute it down. Okay, metallics can be very, very thick. We don't want that. We want it to come off smooth off the brush. Twirl your brush, okay, to get the point. Not too much on the, on, on the brush at all, um, just enough. And we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna trick the line edge highlighting. So not across everywhere, we're gonna do um, just across the main top, top um, 
pa panel lines. So across the shoulder, uh, here across the front there, this, this main line across the armor there, um, maybe across the edge of the shoulder pads, across the top here, um, a little bit around the legs because they're nice and easy to do. Anywhere where you can do it easily basically and leave the rest because the dry brushing does all that for you. So this is like an optional step to further increase um, the highlighting and it should look pretty cool. So with highlighting, you want to mostly go on the um, edge of your brush, not the tip. Okay, and you put it, um, let's see if we get that in focus, and so you're running it from the side of the brush along the edge of the model, okay, directly facing that edge, right, so not coming it from here or from the top, you're going directly facing it across, and just build that highlight um, into the center panels, and just to further clean up some of the dry brushing, um, just to create the illusion that you've spent hours line highlighting this and making it look really cool. So this is a nice easy one to show here. You come across and run that down and you can just pop a little tiny bit in there. Okay. Across the top here. So we want to lift that right up across that side there and just very carefully run it like that. So you just want to go through and pick out the main lines. On the backpack you might go on this. Okay, so some areas you are going to have to use the tip and not the side of the brush because it's just the, the nature of, of what you're doing. So get, give yourself a really good angle and just very very gently run that across like that. And you'll just get a little bit more sharp line. So it doesn't have to be everywhere, just the main, the main bits. These little top areas here, uh, maybe across those little exhaust uh, pipes there, just on the top. See the way the natural light of my, my light is hitting that, and you have very bright light? Just follow that. So that, that line across there, a little bit on here, and across this edge, and there and there, that's it. You don't have to go all the way around, or all that kind of thing. Just those main, those main edges. Um, and that will just lift the model completely. So I'm going to go through and do all that, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so finally, the results. So this is this final step. Just a little bit of extra line highlighting on the top surfaces and you can see now that it's just adding a little bit more brightness across the top of that hand, that, that hand there, you can see the leg, it's a little more, that elbow there, and there you have it, simple, effective oily metal for space marines or necrons or basically any metal surface you want to do really fast really easy um, you can get an army like this together super super quick so as i said you could have stopped just the dry brush but um yeah i think this little extra step of just um refining those highlights is a is a nice thing to do and it's good practice as well you know you want to you want to keep pushing your skills um, so that you can do more in the hobby and this is um, what you could end up with so you could base everything like i've done here get your whole army to this step and now you've got painted models you know what i mean like it's very close to battle uh, you know that basic battle standard um level uh, just from doing this uh, so yeah so i just thought i'd show you i'll do a close-up of this at the end with an overview but I thought I'd show you what um, a finished product looks like. This is my army. So um, one of the tricks to metallic schemes is, is looking for um, a secondary color, a matte color um, to go with the metallic to break it up. So I've used like um, basically black that's been highlighted and then a contrast paint put over the top to, to color it. Um, just to give some difference on, on the model. But you can see the line highlighting there on the metallics. And I've chosen bone as another color as well, which is classic, you know, classic 40k stuff um, yeah just breaks it up a bit gives you a nice finish and um, you can do these guys really really fast so you could use a different color you could use red or yellow or any color on those shoulder pads and the helmets I've always loved that like that classic thing of um, coloring the helmets that's like old school kind of rogue trader you know first second edition 40k kind of stuff is to have these kind of colored helmets which some of the chapters still do you know blood angels and so on um, and and even even the standard codex chapters will have different colored helmets for you know veterans and so on and I, I love it on the just the standard guys as well uh, so yeah 
that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, tutorial on painting oily metal. Um, good luck with it. I hope you um, this has been helpful and that it, you utilize it because um, it really is a fun and enjoyable technique to try. So good luck with it and uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.